2023, it's been hurtling through space for the past 10 months, but NASA's Maven craft slammed on the brakes in the early hours of this morning to begin its orbit above Mars. It'll spend the next year investigating why Mars is so dry. We'll find out more in a moment. First, let's have a look at the moment that scientists from the space agency realized their mission was a success. <laughs> on Maven Cord, based on observed navigation data, congratulations. Maven is now in Mars orbit. Fantastic. Wow. Okay. <laughs> my oh my goodness. Awesome. Wow, that just came. You called it. That, you called it. Data. There it is. Mm -hmm. Data doesn't lie. <laughs> no. Oh, that's interesting, the last line, data doesn't lie. Uh, let's talk lie. about that as well. Joining us is a Professor Carol Mundell from Liverpool John Moores University. Um, so, it's taken a while to get there. A little while, yeah. Um, presumably a big success even to be able to get into orbit, is that Absolutely. about right? Yeah, I mean, about 3.30 this morning they had the, uh, the rocket uh, thrusters burn for about 33 minutes, I believe 11 seconds. And the idea is actually to put the, the probe into orbit around Mars. Mm -hmm. At the moment, they put it into an orbit that lasts about 35 hours. And over the next month or so, they'll adjust those orbital parameters. They'll have a few more burns, and then eventually it will go into a four and a half hour orbit, which is actually very elongated. It's not a circle, it's an, it's an ellipse. So its yeah. highest point will be about 3,900 miles away from Mars. So they'll be able to look at the interaction of the Martian atmosphere with the solar wind. Um, and at the closest approach it'll be about 90 miles and then they'll do some deeper dips down to about 70 miles so and in layman's like terms we described uh, this vessel hurtling towards mars for mm. 10 months or so as it comes close to make sure it gets into that orbit. What do they actually have to do? It's just slowing down enough that it gets picked up That's and right. the danger is it could just go crashing straight through. That's right. I mean, first of all they had to point it so that it was in the right sort of um, orientation and then they put the, the thrusters on so that it actually gets into an orbit that is captured by ma the Martian gravity. And that was what was the success that you saw the, the scientists cheering about in the early hours. Okay, so you, I know you're very interested in this kind of thing, so what are you hoping will be, will be that they'll find out? What kind of thing do you want the answer to? Yeah, so I mean the, the big question here about Mars really is obviously why it is the way it is today. I mean we think that billions of years ago it might have been very similar to the Earth, um, but for some reason it has lost its atmosphere. I mean the surface atmospheric pressure at the surface of Mars is only about 1% that of Earth. Um, we think that it used to have a magnetic field. Obviously, the Earth has a magnetic field that shields us from the solar um, particles that stream out of the sun stops us being toasted on the surface of the Earth. Mars doesn't have that. I mean, there are little pockets of magnetic fields around Mars. Um, so really the idea of this probe is to study the, the atmosphere as it is now in the hope of understanding how it was billions of years ago and also to hopefully understand in the future whether we can actually send manned mission to Mars in, in the 2030s. Well, it's, th it's fascinating, isn't it? Because there's, there's a blend of uh, the fascination with science in Mars but also in music and in literature there's always been a thing about Mars, isn't there? That's it? right. I mean, actually, this probe actually has a, a disc on it um, that has the, the names of about 100,000 people. It has um, some haiku poetry on it and some music. And so... What for? Well, you know, <laughs> I know, Charlie, you're going to ask me the next thing. Are the little green men on Mars and are we sending them CDs? Um, but, well, you know, why, is the, why have they got a disc I mean, this there? idea is this probe is actually going out into space. I mean, I think the, the Voyager um, spacecraft also has a similar disc. So if, you know, intelligent life is encountered when these things are out in space, then we've actually left our marks. So. Oh, so they are going to play. They're going to play well, things. Well, it's there on the probe. I don't think they're going to play it necessarily. But <laughs> someone finds it, figures out how to play it. Yeah, exactly. They'll have a nice poem. So. <laughs> They could have a CD player, Charlie, too. But that just proves that scientists also, <laughs> in the back of their heads, they're thinking, maybe. <laughs> well, we, we like to cover all our bases. <laughs> <laughs> really lovely to talk to you, as always. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Uh, let's see what's coming up on Breakfast a little later.